I'm so excited about this. Look at well, you guys chilling out on my couch. Welcome. We're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I wanted to chill on this couch the second I came in this place. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Off the street. That Thanks for having us back to our old neighborhood in Greenpoint. Yeah, it's absolutely. F- it's kind of somewhat infuriating to know that you were like two blocks away from us. We were just living up the block for 11 years and now we're not here. It's like it's like we come back and like I'm like, what the heck? These people were here the whole time? It's crazy. <laughs> Bunny? <laughs> Bunny's here? You're Bunny? I'm Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love but um, it. yeah, welcome. We, you're, you're not the first witch, but you're a very esteemed one that, <laughs> to have come on our podcast. I think you're the first witch that's written a book that's been on our podcast. Oh, that's exciting. Oh, wait, no, Kristen no. Soleil. We just, yeah. But the, it, the first witch that used to live two blocks away from you and yeah. you didn't know it yes. for certain. Exactly. For certain. Exactly. I get that title. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're making this movie Wild Magic. And I've realized since we started making it, the spell we've cast on our life. Because when, when you're a filmmaker, everyone is like, what are you working on? Which can be crushing if you're not working on anything. So we always try to be working on something. And this one, we're so excited to be like, we're making this thing Wild Magic. And through telling people that, we meet people like yourself. Like, we met a filmmaker the other night, and he was like, you have to meet Veronica. And this just, I could just tell right away. I was like, we're going to be best friends with her. It's fine. It will. <laughs> it's on. Yes, so, yes. yeah, we cast a spell on our life for by, by saying, hey, we're making a film called Wild Magic. And uh, so we have been willing to ride that wave. And I think that's how we ended up here. And you just gave us a brilliant bit for our movie. So deeply appreciate that oh that makes me happy and but it's so good to have you guys here yeah yes. yeah jesus i mean I, hopefully from the video you can get a sense of the place but you'll see more in uh, in the wild magic film mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so what is it T- tell us about your book bohemian magic um bohemian magic um for those of you that are watching on youtube here it is um bohemian magic is a book about witchcraft and secret spells that i grew up with that my grandmother, um, Helen, she really gave me a lot of magic that was from her mother that was passed down. And I grew up with that. And, um, and then I kind of started doing my own magic things uh, with music, with rock and roll, with um, doing a lot of different past, present, future magic, sex magic, like all sort of experimenting with different kinds of magic and um, the entire mishmash beauty of all of that is in Bohemian Magic, my book. So wow. it's done like a grimoire. Um, it's done like it's done like a 90s scrapbook. Like all of my books will always look like worth cut out pictures of like Kurt Cobain <laughs> and because um, oh, yeah. he's in here and um, and, uh, you know, my own handwriting and doodles and things like that. So it's a very personal book wow. on so many levels. Yeah. Brilliant. We share that love. Very ape is from yeah, the our, Nirvana song. Yeah, our yes. this podcast named after Nirvana song. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Love you. What's love you. what's the deal with Curtin there? What did you say about him? Well, spoiler alert. Well, um, <laughs> you know, we're just. T- I was just talking about uh, your heroes, and basically, I have this thing in in the book where when I wanted to do certain things I did this thing called a spell I wrote a spell called the magic bus and you think where is it that I want to get to what kind of vibe do I want to get to and you think of the people on the other side that match that kind of vibe that might have a skill or a lesson or something beautiful that you can ask them so these are people that have passed Yes. Do they have to be close to you or anything, or can they be a historic figure? They can be anybody. That's the cool part, because um, in the book, like, I show, like, my different, quote-unquote, magic buses. So it's like, who do you want to get go on this trip with? And, like, for instance, like, it might be somebody like... Um, For instance, like Jack Kerouac was somebody that really influenced me when I was in high school, for sure. And his talk of the love of the road. So like he was on the magic bus. So you set Mm -hmm. up a picture and you 
you like print out a picture of them, you put it up and you put a tea light in front of them. And like, you know, Kurt Cobain was there, um, E.B. White, um, you know, um, a lot of, you can do like whoever that is on the other side, that is somebody that, you know, influenced you in some way. I like to call them ancestors. And I know that's controversial because they're not directly related to me, but I believe that ancestors are anyone that raised you, Mm -hmm. that kind of raised you up and their influence had some kind of influence on the person that you are. And then to me, that's an ancestor. So, (laughs) you know, I, I mean, you know, Kurt Cobain, Mr. Rogers, you know, um, (laughs) Ginger from um, Gilligan's Island. Ooh. Well, oh, she's like she's Ooh. she's still here though, but she's still here and she's fucking fabulous too. But um, but I'm just like thinking like all the different, all the different pieces and and people that you know you can call upon, mm. and so you basically set up an altar with photos, and um, I have a picture of Kurt in here, and you send you do an altar with their photos and you light the candles and you ask for their help and you say like, send me the, you know, I'm looking to you for your creativity and for your ability to say exactly what needs to be said. Mm -hmm. Can you please like color my journey with that? And, um, yeah, that's the magic bus spell that I did. So yeah. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. So I'm gonna use that. Yeah, they're like sure. a board of directors on the other side. Your favorite yeah. people. Oh, yeah. We yeah. call them the saints of the Church of Chill. We want to get them all in like stained glass. Like here's Bob Dylan, <laughs> Rocky Erickson. You know, like all I the would heroes. love to have. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, the saints. Oh my god, I love that idea. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's really cool. I think about all the people that raised me that weren't my family. It's crazy. I mean, like we're from a generation that was raised a lot by the TV and yes. by CDs and now it's a different thing. Now mm-hmm. now it's a, it's it's shifted a little bit. Like so you and I probably have a lot of the same people because we were drawing from the same thing. Now it's so splintered and fractured. It's all over the place. Right. But I do wonder uh, your thoughts on like so when Kurt Cobain was alive are his powers like his and they're contained to that that body that he was in? And then when he's not here, it's like they're more available to us. Like, do you have any thoughts on that? Or can you tap into a motherfucker that's still here already and start, you know? I th- mm, that's that's a really good question. Because he needed his powers while he was here. He How else would we get all that music? <laughs> yeah, know? he needed his powers for sure. I think you can also... Um, ask kindly and put it out there and be like, I love, you know, what, um, you know, somebody's doing that's here currently. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and ask if you can have their support, but I think that it's more powerful to tap into somebody on the other side. Yeah. Like personally, mm-hmm. I think that, um, I think that they're there, um, to still help and continue and continue on, you know? I feel like George Harrison has been like our our shared grandfather. He's guided us a lot. I he's, was, he's helped us a lot. Amazing. I was probably one of the only people that when Ram Dass died, I was like, oh, now we get a little bit more of him. You it know what I mean? It did feel like that. It did feel like that with him because he trained us to think that well, way. Maybe, so I probably wasn't one of the only people, but I was like, morning, Ram Dass. What do you mean? Now he's like... Where could he go? We know he's closer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's true. I think about too, like we watch a lot of um, sports documentaries and the amount of, of cases, like there's this one I was watching the other day. Um, the Detroit Pistons were in the finals and this guy, Joe Dumars, who was on their team, went off, had one of the best games in NBA finals history. And what the team, everyone knew, but didn't tell him is that before the game, his dad died. <sighs> And they didn't tell him until after the game. And there, there's just countless, especially from sports history, countless examples of the person's parent died on the day of the big game. And they had the most ridiculous, like, b- superhuman game of their life. Wasn't he like, he didn't know his dad died. So he's like. He, he, there's literally footage of him throwing up shots he shouldn't have thrown up. And they're going in and he's looking at the other pl- players in the team like there's slow motion footage of him being like what the fuck is going on <laughs> and the game ends and wow. everyone's celebrating and the coach had to come in and say well, you got to take a phone call in the other room 
and uh you know it's he- it's it's kind of wow. heavy stuff but it's like um you know I've uh, I've had very close my sister died and I feel like she's been she's just guided my family ever since and she's kept us together and kept like a focal point of somebody that we all know that's on the other side that we knew very well and who went there way too young but she's living through us you know mm-hmm. so uh you know and and her dying helped me get in touch with uh my desires and you know i think the desires are kind of the foundational root of all of this stuff Mm -hmm. i don't know yeah you tell me it feels like if you're not in touch with your desires how could you live with intention exactly how can you do magic without intention you can't yeah yeah wow yeah it's interesting stuff to think about and it's uh this probably sounds pretty far out to somebody who hasn't like had the felt experience. Right. Right. But, uh, like, like even if you wanted to tell that story about your house burning down, like oh. that to me, that's like the, the, like a prime example yeah. of this type of thing. Well, um, yeah. Um, my, I'm sorry to hear about your sister. Oh, it's okay. Also. And it's okay. She's with me. She is with you. Oh, she, she, without a doubt. She's chilling right now. With she loves Greenpoint. I love this. <laughs> I love this. I'm glad she's here. Yeah, Welcome, yeah, totally. sis. Totally. Aaron Patricia. Aaron Patricia. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Yes, girl. Excited <laughs> she's here, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. With with my house burning down um, in in 2011, um, I, I had this... Uh, tiny cottage that burned to the ground in the middle of the night and basically what had happened was um after the firefighters left and everybody was gone um my previous partner and I were sitting on a rock just look in shock looking at the burned house and there was nothing left it was still smoldering it was it was uh it was it was pretty bad and we were both so sad and it was like um this bubble it's so hard to explain it was almost as if a bubble of good energy or thoughts just like came around us and we suddenly both of us felt it and we're like wow like everything is going to be all right it's okay it's not great but we're here our story is continuing and um, it's going to be all right. And it was just like, it felt like a hug. And were you like surprised by the grace? Like, cause it, do- it feels like panic time for sure. It feels like, Oh, it all fell apart time. It, it and it was the makings all... of a nervous breakdown. Exactly. <laughs> no, I literally came running up the driveway and like threw myself on like the rubble, like hysterical crying and like firefighters like carried me off. I was like trying to get stuff. Like it was crazy. And, um, it was definitely not the moment to feel like, oh, you know, it's all good. Like, no, that was not the moment I was hysterical crying. Like there was, and so that's why it was so shocking. Cause I've never felt something, this energy that just took over my mind, my body, my spirit. That was just like, you're good. You're good. Everything's good. And, um, and both of us felt it and we're like, wow, that was weird. Like, it was almost like we were like being spoken to from like spirits or something saying like, everything's going to be all right. And a year to the day that it burned down, we were there because we were working on building the new house. And, um, I was like, oh my God. And I looked back at my phone and I had taken a picture when we were there on the rock and this moment happened because it was just so bizarre. And it was 5.05 p.m. And I was like, oh, my God, it's almost 5.05. Let's run up there. We ran up to the rock. We sat in the exact same spots. And we sent good thoughts back to the couple that was on the rock a year prior, this exact same moment, this exact same time, this exact same rock, looking now at the beginnings of a new thing. And we sent with all of our power and all of our minds, like, it's going to be okay. And we did that as a ritual every year for several years after. And I know without a shadow of a doubt that me in 2011 that was devastated and crying and had just lost all of everything, I knew that the feeling that I got that bubble was me in the future sending me that message back and I received it in that moment Mm. 
And so I really love to work with past, present, and future magic because I know it works. Mm. I know it works. And it's so available. Mm -hmm. It's available to anyone. Mm -hmm. This isn't something you need to be studying in libraries, cloaked in this and that. It's just, oh no. (laughs) It's simple. Send love back, send it forward. Yeah. Receive it in the present. Exactly. Right? I mean, exactly. You know, if you've got if you've got a big thing going on, like you you have something major happening in your life and you know it's coming up in a week, take that moment and send your future self that extra confidence that they need for that day. Like just imagine like if you know what you're going to wear that day, like just imagine you and those clothes exactly where you're going to be and really get into it and send future you like even if it's just a week ahead of time, send it to them that confidence so that they can pick it up and then a week afterward send it back Mm -hmm. to that person that is also doing it so it doesn't have to be like a full year and like Mm -hmm. exact Mm -hmm. times but it doesn't hurt (laughs) it doesn't hurt you know i feel like we're scraping by on this kind of energy right now because i I feel like the spell we cast on our future is just like we won let's let's yes let's enjoy it let's enjoy the ride and we're at it like, I mean, objectively, like on paper at a particularly low point, like we lost all our money, we lost our apartment, like we're trying to rebuild, but there's something that we keep telling ourselves, like we won. It's, a, it's fine. Like we found each other. Right. We found each other. What, what, uh, you know, what, what the hell else can we expect here? Right. And life's going to throw shit at us. But like that feeling like we won and it's going to be okay is the only reason we're getting through these years right now. I feel like, right. Yeah, I feel a smoke bubble. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we definitely. Probably because of this conversation and the future memories we'll send back to that scared version of us. Yeah, and when we go to bed every night, um, like we sleep in separate beds in the same room, mm-hmm. and we say to each other, like, sweet dreams, it's like, start sending that, like, because we learned from Neville Goddard and all this, like, the the particularly right when you're, like, falling asleep, if you can hold on to especially the details like you're saying get granular about it Mm -hmm. about how that feels to inhabit that place we both do it every night and i think we have a shared vision so it might be a little bit more charged and powerful and what we're choosing to do is not judge how we get to the place where we're ultimately victorious objectively you know who cares how it looks like we have each other along the way let's just have fun Mm. and appreciate it yeah the winning thing is like it's not even a financial success it's like wow we just we did our life we made art we we followed the muse you know and we weren't scared we kept connecting with people because i think that to me is when you start going on the other path and you know we have tons of examples in our our private life of friends who kind of took the that left turn towards isolation and building yourself up and you know hoarding your resources and just making sure you're okay and you and yours and like We've just chosen really not to live like that and just be a little bit more open. And it it comes with a big price. It definitely comes with a big price. But I think ultimately we cast some sort of spell on our life and we do it with each one of these films. And right now we're in the wild magic portion of our life. So we don't want to stop. We don't want to stop making this movie, you know, because it's just like, oh, is the spell going to be over? Like we're going to have to cast another one. And, you know, with, with some of these movies when we're making them so weird like I, I have like this nervous gut feeling because i can feel how big it's gonna be mm-hmm. and i feel how impactful really with something like wild magic i, f- I can feel how impactful it's gonna be and it's like uh it's a, it's a, it's confidence building but it's like very like unsettling it's almost like i'm not that person yet that can handle how powerful this thing i might put out is gonna be like when we were doing american juggalo i felt that when i thought of the right. title of it Right. I was like, whoa, whoa, that's like, that's, that's a powerful thing, whatever. A lot of people are going to see that and imbue it with meaning. And uh, right. I just have to be ready to be the guy that can handle that. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And in, yeah. in Bohemian Magic, um, the, it opens with your life is the greatest spell you will ever cast. Mm. So mm. the fact that we're here right now, that we got to meet, through another magical friend, Zina Brown, and through, because he's a big connector. He loves connecting magic people with Mm. other magic people. Mm. And like, I did not expect this moment to happen at all. And here we are chilling in my bedroom and hanging out in Greenpoint. And, 
it feels really good. You know, yeah. it feels really right. And, and that felt like a, a spell that we cast because the reason that we met him and took to him so quickly is because he, he knew our films. He was like, you guys made those? He told me. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, and, and like to me, like as an, a real introvert, like we're both very introverted. Like we're not going to go talking about that or doing self brags or anything. But it's like if you know our movies, like you know us. So it's such a relief. And then we could get to know that person and really hear each other. And he understood like what we're doing to yeah. its core. And you're the only name that came up. You were, he was just like, go to Veronica. So Okay. And I have to ask you, you were talking earlier about somebody that you were doing the podcast with. What is that person's name? Mm, oh, the ungoogleable Michelangelo? Yes. Yes. Okay. So here's, here's a quick little side note. Zina and um, his partner Madeline came down to New Orleans, and my husband and the the four of us all together did a spell on the river, and the spell was for soul community, wow. and about bringing in the people that we're gonna rise with, that we're gonna help each other get mm. to where we need to get to be, and like really feel this purpose driven magical life and like fill it up and we did we all brought something and we were burning something at the end um we we wrote letters and burned them and like to the spirits because my grandma used to say when you write letters and you burn them to the spirits like your script the script goes up in cursive in the smoke so that the spirits can read your note and um, so it's kind of like if you want to get anything to the spirits, that's how you do it. So we burn this thing at the end. And at the very end, Zina saw something in the, the ashes. And it was an old snail shell. And he picked it up and he was like, where did this come from? And then he told me the last time I saw him that he met the ungoogleable Michelangelo yeah. who has an obsession with snails yeah with snails <laughs> yes. and if you listen to the podcast we did with him it's two episodes ago he brings it up and he talks about it as like a, a reoccurring theme in his life and Zina found the snail shell and he was like this is a sign and brought it back with him and wow. then so we're part of the same family my friends yeah, and yeah. this so is fun. soul community you're reminding me that we were on a hike earlier this year and we do this hike all the time and i found a snail shell and i was like Where the smallest th i was like how did i even spot this so maybe it's like little cosmic winks on the pack path so you never know what you're seeing the significance of it is you just kind of like want to take it all in it, well, and, and don't even judge the significance of it. Yeah. Just just understand it's like a, like it's a seed for a synchronicity that's probably going to happen or something's something's going to unfold. Yeah, it's it's like, uh, you know, when we talk about like our prayers and our desires and all this stuff, like I want people to understand it's always about people. It's never like, oh, please get let us get this sum of money or this or that, because we know that doesn't change our life. We've had a lot of money. It, 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 right. it doesn't do anything. What changes our life is meeting a new person. And the muse takes form and you get inspired again. And now we want to impress you with this movie. And now we want to come visit New Orleans and like all this stuff. I have we a place we can do screenings of it. Yes. Because that's it, my big dream for it is that it like is becomes a, a film that you want to show and that it's like kind of has a, a following of like, oh, go to the watch this film and get like an initiation into the magic. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So we, yeah, that when, anytime we pray, it's always about like, let's be mushrooms, let's sporate and, and have an, a mycelial effect on everyone we meet. And to the point where it's just like, like we met you and of course we know all these people in common and we didn't know that before we came over here. And it just feels like the mycelial network of us freaks gets a little stronger and more <laughs> resilient when these connections get made. It's also like really fun to meet people like, are like that are you know, also not having kids and also like being like, love that. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to anyone that has kids or is trying to or whatever. God bless you for continuing the human race. But um, it's really nice to meet other people who are like, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Because like you said before, you were like, I, you said, I don't have human kids. Yeah. And I was like, damn, we're stealing that. We're, <laughs> we, it always takes us a lot more words to, exp it, you know, explain that. We're, we're like, soul parents to some people. <laughs> yeah, you're soul parents yeah. to your child self yeah. and your future self. And that's a lot to handle. 
Hell That's a big yeah. family right there. Yeah. Taking yeah. care of like little us from the past and sending that vibe back for yeah. whenever they needed it. That's that's some parenting right there. So I think we're yeah. all parents in our own way. Yeah, my my fucked up thing is I feel like the little me right now. When yes. I, when I think about my past self, I'm like, that's a little guy that had to grow up way too fast and was way too adult for his own age, which thank God, because I got into all this great music and movies and stuff. But like, you know, Cass is like, were you into Ninja Turtles? I'm like, all my friends were. I thought it was for kids. Like, you know right. what I mean? Like, I was more of an adult. Like, I feel like I'm a kid now. And yeah. and it was like, you know, that kid had to be more of an adult so I could be a, make a bunch of money and be a kid and fuck around and <laughs> do his thing. I don't yeah. know what future me is, but. He's a wise motherfucker who sends grace back, clearly. Yeah, but you can reclaim your childhood, and I think it's important to uh, yeah. honor that childhood, right? Um, you were talking about, like, another thing you were telling us before we did the podcast was about, you kind of had more tangible examples of uh, some magic you've done, like, around getting a house, and it just made me think, like, oh, that's so valuable, because there's so many people who have, like, these dreams and ambitions and want to honor this goal that they have, but maybe don't know how to talk to the universe or how to make ritual around maybe a goal or or something like that say getting a particular house or whatever right yeah i had i i was sharing yeah we were sharing this earlier before before you guys before the podcast <laughs> party um before the homies joined us <laughs> <laughs> we're glad you're here so yes. we're gonna catch you up people <laughs> um so so what happened was um i i was really drawn to um spending more time in new orleans because i do witch camp there and i do witch camp two times a year mm. and I love New Orleans and I love the vibe and it's, um, you know, there's a lot of beautiful supernatural things that go down there and I love it. And, um, so what happened is I had found this place that was perfect. It was like a 600 square foot, tiny little place from the 1800s. I was like, oh yes, this is it. It's in my price range. Everything is going to be good. This is it. This is the house. I know it. I know it. I know it. And so my husband and I, we were walking around and there's this special tree in New Orleans. And like, if you know, you know, everybody goes down there. Everybody does spells. It's covered in spell work. Nobody messes with anybody else's thing. Like everybody knows, like they give you time. Like everybody's doing spells there. And uh, so we went down there and he had found this random um, stegosaurus is that the one with a hunchback that's yeah. like kind of low to the ground okay so he found one of those on the street and it had like an open mouth so he's like you know what we should do is let's dig some dirt from the roots of the tree and let let the the spirits of the land know that we want to create roots here and that we're going to bring some dirt from this magic tree put it in the dinosaur's mouth and we're going to put it underneath this house that mm. we want because nobody lives there right now. It's cool. We snuck in there. We put it under because that's the beauty of New Orleans because like the house, my house now has the entire thing is on top of spells because it can be because there's no foundation in New Orleans. So, um, so yeah, so we put this dinosaur underneath this house and I was doing spells every single day being like, please let this be the house that we're living in. I can like, I can imagine us living there. I can like see it. I had a good feeling when I went in there and I was like, I think this can be our house. And, um, you know, I did so many, um, I did so many things, so many things. Every single night I was lighting candles and talking to my spirits and my ancestors and being like, please let this be the thing. This or something better. But I know that this is the yeah. best thing for me, you know, because yeah. in our human mind, we're like, no, 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 no. This is this is it. Yeah. I know because, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not looking into the future then. And um, we did not get the house. And I had that moment where I was like. Is my magic no longer working? Like, what's wrong? Like, Fuck what's Stegosaurus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm like, no, this didn't happen. And what ended up happening is a year later, we went back. No, I'm not even thinking about this, but we're still thinking, you know, we'll look for a place. And my husband had said, my husband does tarot and he's deeply psychic. And he was like, he said to me in November of the, the previous year, he said, you know what? I think... 
I feel like we're going to get in on Valentine's Day. I feel like we're going to find our house on Valentine's Day. And I wrote it in my magic book and forgot about it. Cause like Valentine's Day is my day. Like it just, it, my grandma called me Valentine face. We have like, uh, she finds a way to like make things happen on Valentine's Day every year. My book got, um, I got the contract on Valentine's Day, like th- crazy stuff always happens. So I was just like, all right, I, w- I want to think that too. And, um, fast forward to every single year I pass out Valentine's and I give Valentine's to women on the streets and I write like poetry on the inside and like, you're awesome. Like keep doing your thing. You're fucking gorgeous. Like kill the game. Love you. Happy Valentine's day. You're doing you, you know? (laughs) And, um, so, and so I made 50 Valentine's and the thing was, was that the Valentine's I wanted to get Snoopy Valentine's, but they were all sold out. And so I had to order Valentine's at the last minute and the coolest ones that they had, and I'm not a dinosaur person. The coolest ones they had were these little dinosaurs that you would like twist tie onto a Valentine. So people could have a physical object of a memory of that moment that a stranger gave them a Valentine. So if they don't keep the Valentine, at least like maybe they'll keep the physical object and like have it next to their computer be like oh yeah I remember one Valentine's Day this crazy stranger came up to me and gave me a hug and gave me this thing (laughs) so we're walking around passing out these things a year has passed we're not even thinking about looking in a house right now and all of a sudden as you can remember from like when we were talking about the house that burned down my house that burned down was um mint green it was purple and also sky blue And these same three colors were in this house. When we turned down a block, I was like, oh, my God. It's like my old house re, like, risen from the ashes (laughs) and turned up in New Orleans. And I was in shock. And as we walked down the block, as we got closer, I saw that the house was for sale. And I'm like, what is going on? And, um, at that moment I was like, hold up one of the things that I promised the spirits and the spirits of the land in new Orleans was that I would give back. And here I am on the streets giving back and like making people happy and like making spreading joy and I'm giving out dinosaurs and the original spell had that stegosaurus dinosaur and I'm not a dinosaur person (laughs) and it's the exact colors of the house that burned down and I walked into that house for the first time and let me tell you what I cried because I was like I live here in the future and I already know it I feel me in the future I have lived in this house and I know where things are and that is um, my space in New Orleans that I can't wait to you guys come down and show you. Yes. And you you did get the even better thing, didn't you? I, I did. And I didn't believe it because I was so certain that in my human mind, I knew what the best thing was for me. And when I didn't get it, I was like, what? But um, they know. Yes. They've got our backs. Yes. They've got our that's backs. That's the best thing about getting older is like you get humbled, but on the way you just also like gain the like confidence and wisdom you're like all right i'm not gonna cry over what spilt milk because everything spilt milk in this universe in a way you just learn patience yeah you know and until you do i think uh you can get what i think what i (laughs) refer to as uh like psychic spiritual hemorrhoids like you know (laughs) where you're like pushing too hard you know and trying too hard and it's like it starts to cast the spell of judgment on your life and negativity. And I just feel like it could take you off the path a little bit and just make these like things start popping up that are like extremely painful and uncomfortable to deal with. And, uh, yeah, I've seen, I've seen that a lot in the psychedelic world, you Mm. know what I mean? Someone drinks ayahuasca and they're like, I am now an ayahuasca woman and I need to serve this and devote my life to it and this and that. And, pushing so hard and just like chaos ensuing and no no vision whatsoever and like i don't know it's spiritual hemorrhoids i just wanted to say that i like that i like that (laughs) metaphor because it does feel like that that you can take your life too seriously almost where you're like you gotta have a little grace about this like magic requires a little grace a little flexibility you know it's it's not necessarily about i mean i to me it doesn't seem to be about um making the universe to your will as much as like collaborating with the universe in a way that that is brilliant what you just said is absolutely brilliant 
collaborating, not bending it to your will, but collaborating with the universe. That's brilliant. That's what it is. Yeah. Period. That's the riches. What we were talking about, the friendships, when we're on our deathbeds, we are not going to be like, damn, I wish I had more money in my bank account. <laughs> we're going to be like, damn, I wish I like, you know, hung out with those people more. Like it's, yeah. we're thinking about the friendships, the community, the creations that mm. we made, mm. the things that we birthed into this world, your documentaries, my book, mm. the different experiences that we have that bring us closer together and make us know that magic is real. Right. Period. Yeah. And, and when you think about it as a, a collaboration, then it's like, what could go wrong, really? It's like, this is part of it. We all got each other's back. <laughs> yes. Let's go. Yes. We've got yeah. this. We won. We already won. We already won. <laughs> the hell are we sitting here <laughs> fretting about? We won. <laughs> you know? We, we took form and we're aware of yes. it. And we're aware of the energies we're dealing with. And like, I don't know, in the simplest way, the way I think of magic is just making the formless into form. And we're figuring out how to do that. And it's like such an exciting, uh, it's, it's such a more exciting life than the one I was doing before I discovered mushrooms and spirituality and things outside of myself. It, yeah, It's so much more exciting. A lot of people resist that and I get it. I understand why, because I was one of those people, but I was also drinking a lot and working a lot and cheating a lot. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, not, um, the best version of myself. I sent love back to that motherfucker because he was wily and out of control and made it so I can't fit in the normal world. <laughs> and so <laughs> thus I have to do this. So like I got to give him some respect. Yeah, absolutely. But that was a person that was kind of uh, holding out the more magical things about life, you right. know, because uh, I was hurt, I think. I don't know. And confused and listening to all the wrong things. You right. know, society or, you know, whatever that that thing, it has a pull. There's like a there's a hum to it that's very alluring. Like, wait, there's comfort in there. There's there's things I can do. There's very simple things I can do to get ahead. And if I just behave myself and rent my life to a corporation and, and get the mortgage and then get the dog and make sure to pay this thing on time, like like I, just getting all caught up in that, I feel like left an absence of magic and unpredictability in my life, which now is like the thing I subsist on. So mm -hmm. absolutely. Go figure. We get definitely get high on it. We call it gambling. You know, we think we're gambling addicts. Yeah. You know, but we don't gamble. Right. But we do. Cause we gamble on ourselves. Yeah. You know, yeah. So. <laughs> which, <laughs> if you're gambling on yourself, like you, you can, I think that you can never go wrong. And I used to be in the corporate world and things like that. And, I got um, I got attacked in the face by a Rottweiler when I was volunteering at the Bark Animal Shelter down down the block and uh, oh. ripped off my nose on the side and underneath and nearly blinded me in my left eye. What? And when I was on the operating table, they were like, and they're waiting for people to come in and they're like putting all these shots in my nose because like, so I won't feel it when they're putting my nose back together. But I was awake. Oh my they didn't God. put me under cause I was going to be in so much shock. I looked at that room in the ceiling and you think, you know, you're in a hospital operating room. There's a lot of people that that's the last thing that they've seen. The, you know, hospitals are a doorway to like, um, birth and death and um they meet there and i looked at the, those tiles on the ceiling and i thought why haven't i lived my life like why have i been like waiting for because i wanted to do burlesque i wanted to do all this stuff i wanted to write but i was like in this corporate thing because i'm like how are my bills going to get paid otherwise you know mm -hmm. and i was like it doesn't have to be that paying your bills can come up in other ways like you can find other ways it doesn't have to just be this corporate thing that wasn't making me happy I mean I'm not slagging key. corporate work you know if you're having a great time like sometimes I do corporate burlesque parties and get paid great and I love it and they treat me awesome and I love it we do commercials that's it, how we pay the bills yeah so <laughs> yeah. so it's like it's like you know if your heart is I think you have to go with you know what you know it's like going back to your past self your little kid self you're like yo I'm am I selling out in this job? And she was like, yes, you are. Mm -hmm. And I was like, ah, oh, she wouldn't be proud of me right now. And I just thought I need to make a serious change in my life because little me is not proud 
of what I'm doing right now. And I was like, yeah, I'm too busy to do my dreams because I'm paying my bills. And that was my big excuse. And when you're gambling on yourself, it can be, it can be intense, as you know. Um, but I think it's the most beautiful life. Yeah. I think it's the most beautiful life you can have, you know. Well, the, the other way is kind of like trying to sleep away depression you know instead of like do something about it and get up and move your body like right the other way is just like well some something hopefully will happen and yeah i get superstitious saying this but i'm gonna say it anyway like especially when covid happened the first thing i did was call my mom and be like just so you know like if i die i'm gonna die happy like i lived my life like in a way that i'm really happy with you know i'm really happy about what we've done and how i've devoted my time and you know so i just I don't know. I've heard a story about a guy who was saying that to a bunch of friends and then he died of a heart attack after teaching a hot yoga class the next week. But, you know, <laughs> so I am a knock on wood. I'm not ready to go. I'm having such a great time, but I really do feel like I'm, I'm here and doing it in a way that's an integrity with like hopefully my future and past self, you know. That's beautiful. That's really beautiful. And I think it's, it's beautiful to say like, we're happy with where we're at right now. And also like, I'm thinking about this and I'm thinking about all the people that are, are listening right now too, and sending that love to all of you guys out yeah. there that, you know, might be going through something at this moment and just thinking like, you might suddenly at this moment feel um, a breeze go past your face or one of those happiness bubbles. And it's because it's the three of us sitting here sending good vibes to you on your journey. And I think that, you know, having, having, knowing that you're in a good place, like what you were talking about and being like, you know what? I'm I'm happy with the life that I'm living and what I'm doing and it's that's th you won you yeah, won doing absolutely that, feeling that yeah and, and we were talking before about like you know working with your your future self and your past self and like I th I th we were saying like we're inadvertently doing this stuff all the time so why not bring a little bit more mindfulness to it because how often do you see an old picture of yourself and you're like oh god or like, uh, you know, what we've had with this podcast, like, oh, I can't listen back to that. Right. You know, like, <laughs> I, I can't watch our old movies. Like, what are you crazy? But like, try to inhabit the opposite. Like, no, that motherfucker got me here. Like, exactly. good thing, that, you know, like, I, I do think that a lot of times, like, the, the self-hatred and the, the culture of comparing ourselves constantly mm -hmm. has us sending terrible fucking spells backwards and our old selves feel that and it has us sending terrible spells into the future we're in magic whether we like it or not whether we're paying attention or not we are magical beings living a magical existence you know we are uh spiritual beings living a human existence rather than humans living a spiritual existence is, yeah uh, and so it's uh yeah that's i sean actually taught me best because sean obviously makes a lot of movies and you have to let go of them and you have to say this one's done you know I'm putting it out and I think that's one of the most difficult things on the artistic practice is saying like okay it's ready and there's something that you've done in this practice of just being like well this is where I was then and I love it for this yeah and it's ready because it's ready but you know because you could always think well if I had another month or another year it'll be better because I'll be I'll be better because I'll have learned that other year but it's like but you're supposed to make something that honors this year yeah, yeah. oh my god totally I just went down the the Wikipedia rabbit hole of the making of the Guns N' Roses album Chinese Democracy which was from 1997 till 2008 19 million dollars was spent on this re-recording after re-recording throwing things away just like i think axel rose was in hell yeah and he had every resource that all of us would dream of having at our disposal right. and he didn't know what to do with it other than curse himself and waste the money and fire people and rehire them and one of the initiations he was having every new person that he brought on to do the album he would have them re-record note for note appetite for destruction their first album as like the initiation now you're in the band and like just the amount of money that was being spent on this process feels like almost the opposite of magic it only it feels like the opposite of everything we're talking about i don't about. know axel wrote <laughs> is that a popular album 
No, <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Trust me, if it was, you would have heard of it. You've heard of Appetite <laughs> for Destruction. You've heard of Use Your Illusion 1 and 2. You might have even heard of the spaghetti incident. But nobody's talking about fucking Chinese democracy. Yeah. And, and not to say that they're talented people and good songs or whatever. Just overthought, overproduced, just fucking fussed over and fussed over and frame fucked to death. And right. Just reading this long ass Wikipedia. Thing. I mean, it's entertaining to just be like, Jesus Christ, people were funding this madness. Right. And and just like, man, this was a, th- this was probably the most anticipated album in rock history. And it just nothing just like uh, because I think that that people can feel that too. Like that's the yeah. other thing when you're creating something. I, I think people can feel the fussed over like, ugh, yeah, you tried too hard. I don't know what you're doing here. I keep I keep thinking about when you're telling the story, um, the White Stripes um, little room Mm. and, you know, when you're in the little room and you're working on something good and you're like you're like in that original space where it's just pure creativity and you're not doing it for the fans or because you don't have any. You're not doing it for, you know, you don't you're you're just like doing it for you. Yeah. And it's so freaking pure. And that song is about like, you know you know, you might end up getting in the bigger room, Mm -hmm. but then you're going to have to think about how you got started in that little room. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's all about like, no matter how much you grow, you got to bring it back to the truth, your purpose, your passion, and that like you putting it out there for like, your mom and dad to listen to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or like, or whoever, like for you, (laughs) for you or whoever, you know, whoever, you know, back in the day that you wanted to, you know, impress like Mm. that's, yeah. It's funny you're saying that because I've had this, I had this dream a couple nights ago that I've been trying to make sense of. And I was in this mansion and I, I stay in this little room, but I like, when people come over, I give them a tour and I show them the whole house and I say, and they have these big rooms that look like giant, you know, glass walls and fancy couches. And I'm like, every time I go into those rooms, I feel like a ghost. Like, I feel like the presence of ghosts. And I'm like, I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I'll show you the rooms, but like, I don't feel safe here. And I don't know if it's me holding myself back or just also realizing like, oh, my powers in like the cozy little rooms and this like fancy, what looked like, you know, a fancy vice office or whatever (laughs) i was like this isn't this doesn't feel good to me you know it's here and i could go towards it and maybe there's a little fear but it's or maybe it's just like there's ghosts there i don't know so i'm gonna stay in this cozy room where i sleep with four other people and (laughs) (laughs) i think it's what she's saying i think it parallels what you were just saying like you appreciate and appreciate the comfort of the small room the, the little one yeah the the pure room the yes exactly yeah well because it, there is something to it and like it, you know that dream is almost a perfect metaphor like like we have like twenty thousand dollars to make this movie imagine we had 20 million yeah it would be haunted with a lot more ghosts <laughs> yeah there'd be a lot more people working on it there'd be a lot more opinions we'd be fucking chinese democracy this shit <laughs> you know <laughs> like, <laughs> i think so I, you know so well, it, it gets it gets it, when you have that much money you get away from the wild magic like the what I want is like the personal connections. This person leads us to this person. We're jumping down rabbit holes where you're going to tell us who the next person we should connect with is, you know, Mm -hmm. it's absolutely, um, you know, I, but I really am so impressed by people who can really not only succeed in the big rooms, but like affect so many people and touch so many people's hearts because there obviously have been so many wonderful albums that have been made on big budgets and wonderful films and that sort of thing. Of course. Like, like I don't think that there's really any like bad Bob Dylan albums. A lot of people do, but I don't. I listen to them all, and I'm like, this is a magical being. But wh- like, there's a great interview with him from 60 Minutes where Ed Bradley's like asking him about writing those early songs, and he says, I, I don't. He said that was magic, and the guy, Ed Bradley's like, what are you talking about? And he's like, I don't know how I did that. I don't know who the person is that did that. It's something that came through. And he starts quoting his own lyrics. And he's like, who would, who would say that? <laughs> who would come up with that? And he's, he basically is saying, I don't have access to that anymore. Wow. You know? But to me, I look at his body of work and I'm like, you never left the pure space. 
But right. for him, maybe he was in the pure space, figured out the formula, right. and has been able to replicate that over all his other albums and figure it out. But like to him, there was a, a very pure time where magic was available to him. Right. And he said he would he would just, I mean, well, Joan Baez said he would type like Kerouac. He, it would just be scrolls. It would yes. just be nonstop yep. typing. And these are lyrics. Like, can you imagine? Like, he, he tangled up in blue. Listen to that song. Like, who the fuck comes up with that? <laughs> yeah. You know? That that's like to me like the the most powerful example of like an artist that's used their magic, but then they hear him talk about how he doesn't feel like he possesses it anymore is such a trip. It's such a wild one. Wow. But I think that's also his attempt to feel normal and feel mm. you know, because I think he's since he's twenty years old been put on this cultural pedestal. Right. He probably craves the just I'm a regular guy. Vibe. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> he's, so he's lying in this interview. Yeah, yeah, he's lying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it sounds great. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how I did that. Yeah. 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 He Absolutely. just doesn't want to give away this, the secrets. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Who knows? I think, I think, because I, I, I think like magic stays with you. And I think that the more that you can, um, that tap into that, like for all of us, I feel like, um, I feel like magic is just a form of remembering. Mm. And like yes. when we, um, when we do witch camp and I'm about to, I'm about to head to new Orleans and do witch camp. Um, when we do witch camp, I always say like, it doesn't matter. Cause there's people that have never done magic ever. And they found my book and they're like, I'm signing up for witch camp. And, um, there's people that have been wow. doing it forever. And they're all in the same room. Wow. And it's like witches of the round table. That's <laughs> how we show up because everyone has something to bring. It's not about how long you've been doing it because it is just, are you willing to remember how incredibly magic you are? Because I feel like our souls are a library and that we haven't opened up all the books and they're from previous lifetimes. And we have that. We have that knowledge within us. It's just somebody needs to say something that'll trigger it and be like, whoa, or a dream or something. There's some kind of way to open up one of those books for you. And I have seen it firsthand in the last um, last year that we did Witch Camp. There was a woman that showed up and she was like, listen, I don't even know if I belong here. And she's like, I don't know if I'm a witch. I saw this book. It called to me and I'm here. And um, and she was like, I just want to say something because, you know, I give this big speech in the beginning that this is a safe space. We encourage each other. We support each other. It's all love here. Like everybody's being their unique, beautiful selves. And that's it, period. Like there is no other way. Um, respecting and honoring each other, period, the whole way through. And she said, you know, I've got this cup because they all have to bring drinking vessels because we don't want to have a bunch of plastic. So she said the drinking vessel that she picked up had said bad witch on it. And she said, you know, it's kind of a play for like bad bitch. But now that you just gave that speech, I feel bad having this. I don't want something that says bad witch on it because you just gave this whole like happiness speech. <laughs> and she, and I said, I said, okay, so what do you want to do? And we don't even know each other's names yet. We're just going around. <laughs> yeah. Right. And it just started. And, uh, she goes, uh, I want to throw it away. And I said, okay, let's make this a ritual. She's like, I don't know how to do a ritual. And I'm like, trust me, just, just trust, just trust yourself. And she's like, all right, uh, I want to throw it away outside because I don't even want it to be in the presence of us here or in a garbage can in the presence. So I said, okay, so everybody, let's get up. Let's walk outside. She walked outside and we're like, oh my God, we're at a crossroads right now in New Orleans. We're literally, the place is at a crossroads that we meet at. Wow. And she's like, this is what I'm going to do we're going to, I'm going to go throw this in a garbage can and I'm not turning around after I throw it away and we're all going to walk back. And we, she threw it away, shut the thing. We all turned our backs on it and we held hands in a circle. Cause she said, I said, now what do you want us to do? And she goes, can we hold hands in a circle? Oh, I'm going to cry. And just like <laughs> start over so sweet. and be mm. like, this is the power. And we held hands in a circle at the crossroads where a decision just was made. 
that she didn't want this negative thing to be brought in here. And I'm telling you, all of a sudden at that moment, as we're holding hands at this, in this, in, at this crossroads in a circle, like the wind picks up like nobody's business. Crows fly in. They're like cawing. There's a train whistle going on in the distance. It was the most magical shit. People had wow. tears in their eyes. And I was like, and I'm sorry, what is your name? And she's like, I'm Denise. And I was like, Denise, you came in here saying that you didn't even know if you belonged here and you didn't even know if you could call yourself a witch. And because you wanted to hold this community so high and these people who you haven't even met yet, who you don't even know their names yet, you wanted to give them a positive thing and throw out this thing that was a negative thing to you. You created this beautiful crossroads ritual and started our entire week off just like that. It's just a matter of remembering and Mm. trusting your like little kid vibe. That's like, what do you want to do? I want to do this. And then I want to hold hands with you guys. And then, It worked. And it was one of the most intense rituals we did all week. Mm. Started by a... Right out the gate. Right out (laughs) the gate. We didn't even know each other's names yet. You know, it was crazy. It was crazy. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, it's just remembering. That's all it is. Yeah, exactly. That's all it is. We we do this thing called Portal Day on January 11th, 111 (gasps) every year. It's our uh, Church of Chill. It's our first official holiday, Portal Day. I love this. Yeah. And we just take acid and um throughout the day or throughout the trip like they're just keep writing our fears so, like everybody's privately like writing their fears and then we throw them all in a thing and we go outside and like it's usually 10 degrees so we're like freezing outside and scream and yell and do the thing and light them on fire or whatever so the last time we did this it was uh um it was a good group of people we all got together but it was so cold and we were in such a confined space on acid that the energy was really intense and so we just kept saying, like, let's write our fears. And we, we, we kept doing it. And of the six of us, there was one person that kept resisting the whole thing. And it's like, ah, oh, that's fucking lame, but whatever. We're just going to keep plowing ahead. And we plowed ahead. And, the, you know, when it was time, the five out of the six of us go down to the, to the river right here and go out onto the Greenpoint Pier. And it's like we take the lighter fluid and we, made, uh, we, we put Epsom salt and uh, alcohol. It makes a, like a firebomb. <laughs> And this thing, you know, went up and we're all screaming, yelling. There's pe- strangers joining us. We're just like, it was great. And you just feel like it dropped you more into your integrity, this thing. We go back up to the house and the person that resisted, it has literally become a demon. And she's sitting there telling, telling us our other friends are evil and that they're vampires and they got to go. It's them or me. And like a lot of just like very confrontational, completely fear-based insanity that uh, we didn't know how to deal with. And I never really even thought of it till now that she was the one that resisted the group ceremony and just, I guess, maybe wasn't able to, to, that, to me, to us, that's our New Year's, January 11th. Like, we're starting the year. We're starting it fresh. Let's burn all the bullshit. And she was just not willing to do it for some reason. And I don't think it was a, I don't think she cast a good spell we, on she her su- life. She succumbed to fear and then l- left this relationship that we had with her friendship and relationship in a state of extreme fear. And paranoia. And sometimes yeah. We I, were in a throuple with her and wow. for two and a half years. And wow. just, you know, started in a place of fear and paranoia and ended in a place of fear and paranoia. I, and sometimes I, I was even thinking driving down to visit you today. I'm like, kind of alarms me how little fear i have sometimes you know what i mean you it know comes up when it's when it's needed. I, it i'm not, not like in an irresponsible yeah. way but i used to drive we used to drive upstate to the city back and forth back and forth and i'd be so consumed in anxiety that i wouldn't be able to be present and i'm just and you saying bringing up portal day reminds me of like i've done rituals around releasing my anxieties burning my fears and now i get to like enjoy the fruits of that labor which is a life that's more present it's not like i don't get anxious or nervous or whatever all the natural human emotions but, but you gotta send send thanks back to those crazy wily motherfuckers who were like let's take acid and burn our fears <laughs> and just doing it every year and being consistent about it and not really even being super like uh investigative about the data points that prove anything but to look back and be like well that last one that, that i'm talking about that was four years ago let's see how it shook out i mean yeah yeah it's pretty clear wow yeah yeah very clear yeah so 
Yeah, you, you got to just sometimes be be very mindful of uh, the group energy and, you know, if you want to go along with things. And I don't know. To me, if it's positively minded and the intentions are positive, like, why not? Like, see what it does. Yeah, know? Throw absolutely. some more shit in the cauldron and stir it up. Like, let's get it going. We built with like a little, with clay, a little demon. <laughs> we burned him too. It was yeah. So, like, it was so Yeah, funny. we were all like making little parts. Like, we were passing around this, like, someone just started, made a ball, and then someone added something to it. And we d- and it ended up being this demon. We just kept passing it around, and it was just like this fucked up demon. And he was one of the, he just wow. represented the He now the lives in the bottom of the East River. He's, he's all so. demented in the bottom of the East River. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. So we'll, we'll do stuff like that. But like, when I think back of that now, I'm like, we don't have enough of that going on right now. We need to, there's a reason we met you. It's like, we need to conjure more magic and do more Especially ceremonies. with what we're doing. And I think yeah. that's why you're such like a potent reminder to us about the power of ritual about, because we have these little things, but our life has been our work, our relationship, when we wake up and set an intention and give water to the earth, like we used to go down to Transmitter Park and we, and every day, and like, I'd pick a little flower plant on the way and like drop it in the water and pour a little water down and, you know, thank the different directions. And I just remember that being such a powerful, potent time that I, I wonder why I forget. You know, it's so easy to forget how That's powerful it we is. are. It's just remembering. Yeah. It's yeah. just remembering. It's just yeah. remember. It's just remembering. <laughs> it really is. Mm-hmm. It really is. It's so powerful, the magic that we have within us, like, when we allow it to yeah. and give honor it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because it's a practice, which means you got to do it daily. You know, you got to create it in your world daily. Yeah. And if you do, oh, my God. And if you don't, yeah. the dog might bite your face off. Exactly. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Ex- and then you're <laughs> like, damn, what am I going to do now? <laughs> yeah. and well, that was probably yeah. one of the most magical things that ever happened but, but, to her in a way, you know? It was a catalyst. It will for come sure. for you. I'm saying. It will, it will come for you. It will yes. come to you with heavy yes. reminders. You'll go through a period of your life where you're like, what, what else could happen? And it's just like, you could wake up. Yeah. You could wake up. Start Re- doing right by yourself. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Because, because like I was raised with magic, so I had, you know, I kind of walked away from magic and was like doing that corporate life, and I was like, I think I was too scared to try to do my creative things and put it out there in the world and fail. Mm-hmm. So I think I was using, I'm too busy and I'm just working and paying my bills and I don't have time for my creative stuff, and I walked away from my magic and that dog like came through and was like um wake up because this is not the path for you and i really think that that dog was um that dog was fully an angel to me Mm -hmm. was an angel to me absolutely just changed the course of my path so many things happened after that dog bite and like what the decisions that i made like everything fell into place it's because crazy. i was way off the path yeah mm-hmm. uh, the, the same thing when my sister passed away it, i was working at history channel i was in a corporate gig it was very comfortable I, I knew where to go every day i knew what i had to do this whole thing and um around the time she was passing away i had taken a bunch of time away and they were very good about like they continued to pay me and i I kept, I was just at the hospital for like four weeks and it was my first break in my adult life from like the corporate grind. Right. And, uh, after she died, I was just like, I can't do that anymore. I'm not going back to that. And that's when I started making films, (sighs) you know, like, but, but I I also couldn't have done it before she died because I needed her to make the films. Like she was very creative person who saw the world in a really unique way and probably would have ended up doing this way better than me had she lived. But since she didn't, I kind of had her access to her powers. And also the reminder that life is uh, very precious and it'll pass you right by. So I was like 27 at the time and I went and made my first film and didn't, I've never turned back. I've never worked a consistent job since then. I'm 42 now and, you know, yes. cruising. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. I love this. I love this. She's my angel wings. She definitely she, is. I love yeah. this. She helps me out. She I feel like she introduced me to Cass in a fucked up way. Like you never got to meet Aaron. But I feel like, you know, I don't know. She was just with me and guided me towards you and I met Cass and within the first five minutes I was like, You should be my girlfriend. You know, like just and talk I've, about I, casting a magical spell. 
and I don't do it like she's like you say that to all the girls and I'm like I literally have never said those words in my life to my girlfriends I've never I've never you know like I, I met Cass and I was just like oh this is it was just like so obvious I'd never had yeah. something so obvious happen and it was like right away and uh but that's yeah. part of like knowing that life is precious that life is like these moments don't happen every day and when they happen you should acknowledge them and yeah yeah and don't be afraid to say out loud you should be my girlfriend yes yeah <laughs> don't be afraid uh, yeah. to say it out loud just afraid. say it yes say it for that girlfriend for that yeah. job for that opportunity yes. for that you thing. should be my house yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly <laughs> and with Zina brown being like you have to meet veronica varlow totally. and now we're together yeah. like i'm so ha- i'm so thankful <laughs> that he um that he said that and yeah. at that moment was like you guys should all meet because soul family and like you guys have to meet not you yes. should There's <laughs> yeah. a, it, we didn't leave a lot of air it was just like you have this is this is the person and it was just like hey we take that that kind of shit seriously so yeah. here we are yeah <laughs> i love it i love it um so how can people get your book Oh, well, people can get my book all over the world, wherever you are. It's called Bohemian Magic. And they can find me at Instagram at, um, at Veronica Varlow, which is um, Veronica with a C and V-A-R-L-O-W, double V's there. So it's Veronica Varlow, V-A-R-L-O-W. And um, you can find me on Instagram and then you can look at my bio and you can see all the cool things that are happening. You can see like witch camp. Go to witch camp, yeah. Yeah, go, go to, to witch, witch camp. camp. <laughs> Pack up your crystals, baby. Let's yeah. go. And uh, and you could see like you could get special editions of Bohemian Magic from me. I highly encourage you to find them at your local bookstores because we love our bookstores. So when we support our local bookstores, that's the best. So there's a bunch of local bookstores that are carrying my thing. It is also available on all the online platforms too. You can always ask your local bookstore, get this book for me. Yes. That's that's the best thing. To that's do. the magic. That's yeah. the magic. That's so. very sweet. Yeah. You're the best. I'm sure we'll do many podcasts together. This is the first of our chronicles. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can't wait. Let's do the next one in New Orleans. Uh, definitely. Definitely. In October. I'm putting it out there. Let's yes. let's cruise. Yes. <laughs> um and if you want to support us, it means the world to us. Uh patreon.com slash church of chill. It's two bucks to get in. You get access to our Discord community, which is the Church of Chill Discord community. The coolest people all over the world chilling, updating each other on insights and wisdom all the time. And uh, tons of bonus podcasts and documentary stuff, you know. Patreon.com slash Church of Chill. Thank you so much. Thanks, Veronica. Peace, love, and magic, y'all. <laughs> yes. Thank you, everyone. Sending all the good vibes out to all of you. <laughs> Mad love. Mad love. Mad love. <laughs>